live from Washington, D.C. The Basilica of the National Shrine of the Immaculate Conception. And the Eternal Word Television Network present the Easter Vigil Mass. With His Eminence, Christophe Cardinal Pierre, Apostolic Nuncio to the United States as celebrant and homilist. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your Dear brothers and sisters, on the mo this most sacred night in which our Lord Jesus Christ passed over from death to life, the Church calls upon her sons and daughters scattered throughout the world to come together to watch and pray. If we keep the memorial of the Lord's Paschal solemnity in this way, listening to his word and celebrating his mysteries, then we shall have the sure hope of sharing his triumph over death and living with him in God. Let us pray. O God, who through your Son bestowed upon the faithful the fire of your glory, sanctify this new fire, we pray, and grant that by these Paschal celebrations we may be so inflamed with heavenly desires that with minds made pure we may attain festivities of unending splendor through Christ our Lord. Christ yesterday and today. The beginning and the end. The Alpha and the Omega. All time belongs to him. And all ages. To him be glory and power through every age and forever. Amen. By his holy and glorious wounds. May Christ the Lord guard us and protect us. May the light of Christ rising in glory dispel the, the darkness of our hearts and minds.
the light of Christ. the light of Christ.
the light of Christ.
May the Lord be in your heart and on your lips, that you may proclaim his paschal praise worthily and well in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Exalt, let them exalt the house of heaven. Exalt, let angel ministers of God exalt. Let the trumpet of salvation sound a loud our mighty King's triumph. Be glad, let earth be glad, as glory floods her. Ablaze with lights from her return, O King. Let all corners of the earth be glad, knowing an end of gloom and darkness. Rejoice, let Mother Church also rejoice, arrayed with the lightning of his glory. Let this holy building shake with joy, filled with the mighty voices of the peoples. Therefore, our dearest friends, Standing in the awesome glory of this holy light, invoke with me, I ask you, the mercy of God Almighty, that he who has been pleased to number me the one worthy among the Levites, May pour into me his light unshadowed, that I may sing this candle's perfect presence. The Lord be with you. Give thanks to the Lord our God. It is the right and just. It is truly right and just, with ardent love of mind and heart, and with devoted service of our voice, to acclaim our God invisible, the Almighty Father and Jesus Christ, our Lord, his Son, his only begotten, who for our sake paid Adam's debt to the eternal Father, and pouring out his own dear blood, wiped clean the record of our ancient sinfulness, these then are the feasts of Passover, in which is slain the Lamb, the one true Lamb, whose blood anoints the doorposts of believers. 
This is the night when one to let our forebears, Israel's children, from slavery in Egypt. And may them pass dry shod through the Red Sea. This is the night that with a pillar of fire banish the darkness of sin. This is the night that even now throughout the world sets Christian believers apart from worldly vices and from the gloom of sin, leading them to grace and joining them to his holy ones. This is the night when Christ broke the prison bars of death and rose victorious from the underworld. Our birth would have been no gain had we not been redeemed. Oh, 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 wonder of your humble care for us. Oh, love, oh, charity beyond all telling. To ransom a slave, you gave away your son. O oh, truly necessary sin of Adam, destroyed completely by the death of Christ. O oh, 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 happy fault that earned so great, so glorious a Redeemer. O oh, 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 truly blessed night, Worthy alone to know the time and hour when Christ rose from the underworld. This is the night of which it is written, the night shall be as bright as day, dazzling is the night for me and full of gladness. The sanctifying power of this night dispels wickedness, washes faults away, restores innocence to the fallen, and joy to mourners, drives out hatred, fosters concord, and brings down the mighty. On this, your night of grace, O Holy Father, accept this candle, a solemn offering, the work of bees and of your servants' hands, an evening sacrifice of praise, this gift from your most holy church. But now we know the praises of this pillar, which glowing fire ignites for God's honor, a fire into many flames divided, yet never dimmed by sharing of its light. For it is fed by melting wax, drawn out by mother bees, to build a torch so, a torch so precious. Oh, 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 truly blessed night, when things of heaven are wed to those of earth and divine to the human. Therefore, O oh Lord, we pray you that this candle, hallowed to the honor of your name, may persevere undimmed to overcome the darkness of this night. Receive it as a pleasing fragrance and let it mingle with the lights of heaven. May this flame be found still burning by the morning star. 
the one morning star who never sets. Christ, your Son, who coming back from death's domain has shed his peaceful light on humanity and lives and reigns forever and ever. Dear brothers and sisters, now that we have begun our solemn vigil, let us listen with quiet heart to the word of God. Let us meditate on how God in times past saved his people, and in these, the last days, has sent us his son as our redeemer. Let us pray that our God may complete this Paschal work of salvation by the fullness of redemption. A reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless wasteland and darkness covered the abyss while a mighty wind swept over the waters. Then God said, let there be light. And there was light. God saw how good the light was. God then separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. Thus, evening came, and morning followed the first day. Then God said, let there be a dome in the middle of the waters to separate one body of water from the other. And so it happened. God made the dome, and it separated the water above the dome from the water below it. God called the dome the sky. Evening came, and morning followed the second day. Then God said, let the water under the sky be gathered into a single basin so that dry land may appear. And so it happened. The water under the sky was gathered into the basin and the dry land appeared. God called the dry land the earth and the basin of the water he called the sea. God saw how good it was. Then God said, let the earth bring forth vegetation, every kind of plant that bears seed, and every kind of fruit tree on earth that bears fruit with its seed in it. And so it happened. The earth brought forth every kind of plant that bears seed and every kind of fruit tree on earth that bears fruit with its seed in it. 
God saw how good it was. Evening came and morning followed the third day. Then God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate day from night. Let them mark the fixed times, the days and the years, and serve as luminaries in the dome of the sky to shed light upon the earth. And so it happened. God made the two great lights, the greater one to govern the day and the lesser one to govern the night. And he made the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to shed light upon the earth, to govern the day and the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. God saw how good it was. Evening came and morning followed the fourth day. Then God said, let the water teem with an abundance of living creatures and on the earth let birds fly beneath the dome of the sky. And so it happened. God created the great sea monsters and all kinds of swimming creatures with the waters teeming with them and all kinds of winged birds. God saw how good it was and God blessed them saying, be fertile, multiply and fill the water of the seas and let the birds multiply on the earth. Evening came and morning followed the fifth day. Then God said, let the earth bring forth all kinds of living creatures, cattle, creeping things, and wild animals of all kinds. And so it happened. God made all kinds of wild animals, all kinds of cattle, and all kinds of creeping things of the earth. God saw how good it was. Then God said, let us make man in our image, after our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and the cattle, and all the wild animals, and all the creatures that crawl on the ground. God created man in his image. In the image of God, he created him, male and female, he created them. God blessed them saying, be fertile and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and all the living things that move on the earth. God also said, See, I give you every seed-bearing plant all over the earth, and every tree that has seed-bearing fruit on it to be your food, and to all the animals of the land, all the birds of the air, and all the living creatures that crawl on the ground, I give all the green plants for food. And so it happened. God looked at everything he had made and he found it very good. Evening came and morning followed the sixth day. Thus, the heavens and the earth and all their array were completed. Since on the seventh day, God was finished with the work he had been doing, he rested on the seventh day 
from all the work he had undertaken. The word of the Lord. Founded the earth on its base. 
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who are wonderful in the ordering of all your works, may those you have redeemed understand that there exists nothing more marvelous than the world's creation in, it, in the beginning, except that, at the end of the ages, Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. God put Abraham to the test. He called to him, Abraham. Here I am, he replied. Then God said, take your son Isaac, your only one whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah. There you shall offer him up as a holocaust on a height that I will point out to you. Early the next morning, Abraham saddled his donkey, took with him his son Isaac and two of his servants as well, and with the wood that he had cut for the Holocaust, set out for the place of which God had told him. On the third day, Abraham got sight of the place from afar. Then he said to his servants, both of you stay here with the donkey while the boy and I go on over yonder. We will worship and then come back to you. Thereupon, Abraham took the wood for the Holocaust and laid it on his son Isaac's shoulders while he himself carried the fire and the knife. As the two walked on together, Isaac spoke to his father, Abraham. Father, Isaac said. Yes, son, he replied. Isaac continued. Here are the fire and the wood, but where is the sheep for the Holocaust? Son, Abraham answered. God himself would provide the sheep for the Holocaust. Then the two continued going forward. When they came to the place of which God had told him, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. Next, he tied up his son Isaac and put him on top of the wood on the altar. Then he reached out and took the knife to slaughter his son. But the Lord's messenger called to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham. Here I am, he answered. Do not lay your hand on the boy, said the messenger. Do not do the least thing to him. I know now how devoted you are to God, since you did not withhold from me your own beloved son. As Abraham looked about, he spied a ram caught by its horns in the thicket. So he went and took the ram and offered it up as a holocaust in place of his son. Abraham named the site Yahweh Yireh. Hence, people now say, on the mountain, the Lord will see. Again, the Lord's messenger called to Abraham from heaven and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you acted as you did in not withholding from me your beloved son, I will bless you abundantly and make your descendants as countless as the stars of the sky and the sands of the seashore. Your descendants shall take possessions of the gates of their enemies. And in your descendants, all the nations of the earth shall find blessing. 
all this because you obeyed my command. The word of the Lord. Let us pray. O God, Supreme Father of the faithful, who increased the children of your promise by pouring out the grace of adoption throughout the whole world, and who through the Paschal mystery make your servant Abraham father of nations as once you swore, grant we pray that your peoples may enter worthily into the grace to which you call them, through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, 
why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to go forward and you lift up your staff and with hand outstretched over the sea, split the sea in two that the Israelites may pass through it on dry land. But I will make the Egyptians so obstinate that they will go in after them. Then I will receive glory through Pharaoh and all his army, his chariots and his charioteers. The Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord. When I receive glory through Pharaoh and his chariots and charioteers. The angel of God, who had been leading Israel's camp, now moved and went around behind them. The column of cloud also, leaving the front, took up its place behind them so that it came between the camp of the Egyptians and that of Israel. But the cloud now became dark, and thus the night passed without the rival camps coming any closer together all night long. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord swept the sea with a strong east wind throughout the night, and so turned it into dry land. When the water was thus divided, the Israelites marched into the midst of the sea on dry land, with the water like a wall to their right and to their left. The Egyptians followed in pursuit. All Pharaoh's horses and chariots and charioteers went after them, right into the midst of the sea. In the night watch, just before dawn, the Lord cast through the column of the fiery cloud upon the Egyptian force a glance that threw it into a panic, and he so clogged their chariot wheels that they could hardly drive. With that, the Egyptians sounded the retreat before Israel because the Lord was fighting for them against the Egyptians. Then the Lord told Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea that the water may flow back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and charioteers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at dawn the sea flowed back to the normal depth. The Egyptians were fleeing head on toward the sea when the Lord hurled them into its midst. As the water flowed back, it covered the chariots and the charioteers of Pharaoh's whole army, which had followed the Israelites into the sea. Not a single one of them escaped. But the Israelites had marched on dry land through the midst of the sea with the water like a wall to the right and to their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel on that day from the power of the Egyptians. When Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the seashore and beheld the great power that the Lord had shown against the Egyptians, they feared the Lord and believed in him and in his servant, Moses. Then Moses and the Israelites sang this song to the Lord. I will sing to the Lord, for he is gloriously triumphant. Horse and chariot he has cast into the sea. The word of the Lord.
Let us pray. O God, whose ancient wonders remain undeemed in splendor, even in our day, for what you once bestowed on a single people, freeing them from Pharaoh's persecution by the power of your right hand, now you bring about as the salvation of the nations through the waters of rebirth, grant, we pray, that the whole world may become children of Abraham and inherit the dignity of Israel's birthright. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
us pray. O God, who make this most sacred night radiant with the glory of the Lord's resurrection, stir up in your church a spirit of adoption, so that renewed in body and mind, we may render your divided service through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, are you unaware that we who were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? We were indeed buried with him through baptism into death so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live in newness of life. For if we have grown into union with him through a death like his, we shall also be united with him in the resurrection. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that our sinful body might be done away with, that we might no longer be in slavery to sin. For a dead person has been absolved from sin. If then we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. We know that Christ, raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has power over him. As to his death, he died to sin once and for all. As to his life, he lives for God. Consequently, you too must think of yourselves as being dead to sin and living for God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Your Eminence, I bring you a message of great joy, the message of Alleluia.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome bought spice so that they might go and anoint him. Very early when the sun had risen, on the first day of the week, they came to the tomb. They were saying to one another, who will roll back the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone had been rolled back. It was very large. On entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a white robe, and they were utterly amazed. He said to them, do not be amazed. You see Jesus of Nazareth, the crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Behold the place where they laid him. But go and tell his disciples and Peter, he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him, as he told you. The Gospel of the Lord. Dear brothers and sisters, happy Easter. Christ is risen. You believe that? Allow me to convey to all of you the warm greetings and spiritual closeness of the Holy Father on this most triumphant night of our Lord's victory over death. Let us sing to the Lord. He has covered himself in glory. These are the words that Moses and God's people sang after they had crossed the Red Sea and saw that their pursuers had perished. We also sing these words in celebration of the thousands of people who tonight in churches across the world will emerge from the waters of baptism as victors with Christ over sin and death. Just as the Israelites had been freed from slavery by an act of God, so the, the baptized as freed from enslavement to sin and death. Let us sing to the Lord. This is indeed a night for singing. Thank God that in this basilica we have a choir of such beautiful voices. Do you agree with me? <laughs> you don't applaud them.
These voices can lead us in songs that give fitting worship to the risen Lord. This is the reason why they are here, for, to help us to pray, to praise the Lord. How good it is to hear once more, after a six-week fast, the sound of Alleluia, Alleluia. How good it is, it will be in the days and weeks to come, to feast on that word of praise, Alleluia, that tries to express a joy that is inexpressible. Joy is the theme of this holy night. The glory of Jesus, which was most hidden throughout his life and was gradually unveiled through signs, is now fully revealed by an act more stupendous than anything that anyone has ever known. By his own power, he has risen from the dead, thus vindicating his prophecy that he would raise his, this temple on the third day and proving that he possesses mastery over life and death. But Jesus achieves this mastery for more than just himself. His resurrection is meant to bring about a radical change in our own lives, a change from focusing on the dead things of this world, which Jesus has overcome, to following him, the man who is always alive among us and leading his church in an ongoing mission of salvation. This is the change that we see. The holy women in tonight's gospel being confronted with Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of James, and Salome are on their way to the tomb of Jesus. If we were to join them on the way, knowing what we know, we might, with some playful amusement, ask them, does the body of a resurrected man need to be anointed? Must the stone be rolled back from the tomb of one who has already escaped from death? Make no mistake. These holy women were among the most devoted followers of Jesus. Their courage, their loyalty proved stronger than that of the apostles at the time of the Lord's Passion. And yet, even they had not understood the Lord's words about rising from the dead, they needed to have the experience of the risen Christ in order to believe. And so, the young man in the white robe says to them, do not be amazed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, the crucified. He has been risen. He is not here. But go and tell his disciples and Peter, he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him, as he told you. In a sense, the one whom the women seek in a, is different from the one they should be seeking. They seek Jesus of Nazareth, the crucified. But to seek the body of the crucified is to seek a past event. It is to visit what was. In the meantime, they are missing out what on what is. Upon finding an empty tomb, they are stopped in their tracks, as it were. 
That is why the young men must tell them, do not be amazed. In other words, do not remain so shocked at this empty tomb that you are prevented from going and finding him who has emptied it. Go, go, he is already ahead of you. Go and catch up with Jesus. This is when their lives are changed. Instead of reverencing a deceased rabbi, they will now be following the living Lord. The experience of these holy women is indeed a good lesson for us. Like them, sometimes we are stopped in our tracks as something we do, did not expect, a new thing that God has done in our own spiritual life or in the life of the church, something we did not expect which leaves us amazed and perhaps even a bit afraid. When this happens, we can respond in one or two of two ways. One response would be to remain stuck where we are, unable and unwilling to apprehend the new reality. This would be like the women if they had remained at the tomb and grieved that it was empty. This is what we do if we mourn for the loss of a version of Christ or an idea of the church that we have fashioned for ourselves. It is time instead to stop being amazed and to go. Immerse ourselves in the company of the Lord's disciples seeing Jesus where he truly is, leading his people in an ongoing mission of love. My dear brothers and sisters, the joy that marks Easter is more than an optimist sentiment. It is the fruit of the Holy Spirit that confirms our deepest hope, Christ has fulfilled his promise, and he is continuing to fulfill his promise. He has risen from the dead, and he is still alive and well in the midst of his church, the church of today. While the new kind of life to which he calls us exceeds our expectations, it is a life worth living because he will always lead us into a greater joy. Amen. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, let us humbly beseech the Lord our God to bless this water he has created, which will be sprinkled upon us as a memorial of our baptism. May he graciously renew us 
that we may remain faithful to the Spirit whom we have received. Lord our God, in your mercy be present to your people who keep vigil on this most sacred night and for us who, who recall the wondrous work of our creation and the still greater work of our redemption, graciously bless this water. For you created water to make the fields fruitful and to refresh and cleanse our bodies. You also made water the instrument of your mercy. For through water, you freed your people from slavery and quenched their thirst in the desert. Through water, the prophets proclaimed the new covenant you were to enter upon with the human race. And last of all, through water, which Christ made holy in the Jordan, you have renewed our corrupted nature in the bath of regeneration. Therefore, may this water be for us a memorial of the baptism we have received and grant that we may share in the gladness of our brothers and sisters who at Easter have received their baptism through Christ our Lord. Dear brothers and sisters, through the Paschal mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with him in the newness of life. And so now, 
that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew the promises of holy baptism by which we once renounced Satan and his works and promised to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church. And so, I ask you, do you renounce Satan? I do. I do. And all his works? I do. And all his empty show? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. I do. do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. I do. do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. I do. I do. And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus, our Lord, for eternal life. Amen. Amen.
With the joy of the resurrection renewed in our hearts, we now turn to God and offer our prayers for our needs and those of the whole world. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, that God will strengthen him to be a faithful servant of the gospel and a voice of peace and hope in the world. Let us pray to the Lord. For our president, legislators, judges, and all those in service to the common good, that through the gift of heavenly wisdom, they may never tire in their commitment to uphold religious freedom, the sanctity of marriage, and the dignity of all human life, from the first moment of conception until natural death. Let us pray to the Lord. For peace throughout areas of the world torn by war, violence, and oppression, especially in Ukraine and the Middle East. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord that many will devote their lives in loving service to the poor, to immigrants and refugees, the marginalized, the sick, and the elderly. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear that the joyful celebration of the resurrection will inspire a deeper faith in the hearts of all God's people, especially those who have entered the church this Easter, and encourage within them a desire to share that faith with others in the perennial mission of the new evangelization. Let us pray to the Lord that many will recognize the gifts God has given them and be open to using those gifts and vocations to the priesthood, diaconate, and consecrated religious life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For the special attentions we hold in our hearts, as well as those enrolled in the National Shrine's Eastern Novena and Shrine Prayer Guild Novena, let us pray to the Lord. Lord that our beloved dead, who died with Christ in baptism, may now share in the glory of the resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord Heavenly Father, your son's victory over sin and death has brought new hope and life to all creation. Hear our prayers on this holy night and lead us to share in the fullness of that new life in your eternal kingdom, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We invite you to use the envelopes provided in the pews, or scan the QR code found in the worship leaflet, or visit the National Shrine online as a means of sharing in our ministry at the Basilica of the National Shrine. Thank you for your continued support and generosity.
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and of all the support of the church. Accept, we ask, O Lord, the prayers of your people with the sacrificial offerings that what has begun in the Paschal Mysteries may, by the working of your power, bring us to the healing of eternity through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times, to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this night, above all, to load you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with Paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the uniting hymn of your glory as they acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, my brother Wilton, the bishop of this church, and me, your unworthy servant, and all those who hold into the truth hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them, we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred night of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sistus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosman and Damian, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray graciously accept the oblation of your service, that of your whole family, which you will make to you, also for those to whom you have been pleased to give the new birth of water and the Holy Spirit, granting them forgiveness of all their sins, Order our days in your peace and command 
that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O oh God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. As we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion of the, resur the resurrection from the dead and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servant and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gift that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you are pleased to accept the gift of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that this gift be borne by the hands of your holy angel at to our altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, 
you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil graciously. Grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my room, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. <clears throat> Pour out on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those you have nourished by this Paschal sacrament one in mind and heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Before the final blessing, Allow me to express a word of gratitude. First, to each and every one of you who are physically with us here at Mary's Shrine, and in a very special way to those who join us at home through our live stream broadcast and the Eternal Word Television Network. We are privileged that Cardinal Christophe Pierre was with us for all of Holy Week. As Apostolic Nuncio, Cardinal Pierre is the personal representative of our Holy Father, Pope Francis, and unites us more closely to the Holy Father. Remnants, thank you for being with us this week. A great word of appreciation to all of our staff here at Mary Shrine for all that they did to ensure that these liturgies of Holy Week were prayerfully and beautifully prayed. In particular, I'm grateful to Father Ismail Ayala, our Director of Liturgy, Dr. Peter Latona, our Director of Music, you've heard our choir and the nuncio had you clap for them so you can clap once again. The sister servants of Mary Maclet who serve as our sacristans as well as our volunteers and staff who help us serve each of you, our guests. Easter Sunday is the heart of our faith and this year, Easter is all the more significant because tomorrow, Easter Sunday, we observe the 100th anniversary of the first mass being celebrated inside this church, down below in the crypt. Since that day, 100 years ago, over 800,000 masses have been celebrated here in Mary's Shrine, including the ordination masses for over 7,000 men. As you leave Mass tonight, the Knights of Columbus ushers will hand out to you a card of remembrance, which features an image of Our Lady of Washington, which right now is a lost image. But this, this image was in the Crypt Church since 1924, for several years. May Our Lady, the Immaculate Conception, intercede for us before her risen son and continue to guide the ministry of this great national shrine in her honor. And may God bless you and Mary Immaculate pray for all of us.
His Eminence Christophe Pierre, by the grace of God and the Apostolic See, titular Archbishop of Gunella and of Apostolic Nuncio to the United States of America, will give the Apostolic Blessing with the plenary indulgence in the name of the Roman Pontiff to all present who are truly penitent and have confessed their sins and received Holy Communion. Pray to God for our Most Holy Father, Pope Francis, for Cardinal Christoph, his personal representative, for the Bishop of this Church, Wilton, and for Holy Mother Church and strive by holiness of life to walk in full communion with it. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. Precibus et meritis Beate Maria Sempre Virginis, Beate Michaelis Archangeli, Beate Ioannis Baptiste et Sanctorum, Apostolorum Petri et Pauli, et Omnius Sanctorum, Misereatur Vestri, Omnipotens Deus, et Dimisis, Omnibus Peccatis Vestris, Perducat Vos, Jesus Christus, ad vita eterna. Amen. Indulgentiam absolutionem et remissionem omnium peccatorum vostrorum, spatium vere et fructuose penitentiae, cor sempre penitens et emendationem vitae, gratiam et consultationem sancti spiritus, et finalem perseverantiam in bonis operibus, tribuat vobis omnipotens et misericors dominus. Amen. Et benedictio Dei omnipotenti, Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti descendat super vos et maneat semper. Amen. Go in peace, Alleluia, Alleluia.